Okay, this uh, screencast is about how the earth recycles materials. Um, we humans think we invented um, the concept of recycling, and it turns out that the planet has always been recycling. These big cycles that we're talking about are called biogeochemical cycles. Bio means life, geo means earth, and chemical means chemical. So it's when materials and chemicals move throughout the biotic and abiotic portions of the environment. This is a diagram of the mercury cycle. Who knew there was a mercury cycle? Today we're going to talk about three cycles that are important for you to know about. The first one is the water cycle, the second one is the carbon cycle, and the third one is the nitrogen cycle. There's also a phosphorus cycle. Um, the water cycle you've probably known since you were a kid, and I'm afraid this slide is a little bit hard to see. Um, hopefully you know most of the terms. Um, precipitation is when rain falls to the earth and then it runs off the land and into the lakes and the percolates into the soil. Um, there's a groundwater underneath the soil and all of that water eventually um, drains into the oceans where it then evaporates or it evaporates from bodies of water. Um, it condenses as water vapor into clouds and it returns back to the earth. Um, there is one word that students are not familiar with um, and that's the word transpiration. Um, if you see it off to the left there, transpiration is the release or evaporation of water through plant leaves. Um, sometimes people refer to it as plant sweat. Um, we don't really appreciate how much water is released into the environment, but it turns out that tropical rainforests, there are so many plants and the vegetation is so thick in tropical rainforests that they're actually producing their own weather patterns. It rains a lot in tropical rainforests because plants are producing so much water. Now that's obviously a cycle. When we cut down the tropical rainforests, the fear is that we are actually going to change weather patterns and actually we may have already um, hugely impacted weather patterns in our um, traditionally tropical rainforests. All right, the next cycle that you need to be familiar with, and you probably aren't, although we have discussed it at length in class, um, is the carbon cycle. The carbon cycle um, refers to the movement of carbon um, through the earth and through the um, atmosphere. Photosynthesis, what the producers are doing, is removing carbon in the form of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. So you see the equation there, carbon dioxide plus water, this is happening in a plant in the presence of light, is turned into glucose and oxygen. Remember that glucose is made of six carbon molecules. So we're taking carbon out of the air and we're turning it into a molecule of sugar. Uh, cell respiration, on the other hand, returns carbon to the atmosphere. That's what humans are doing and that's what most animals are doing. That's what happens in the mitochondria of your cells. We're taking glucose when we eat it and oxygen when we breathe it in. And in the mitochondria, we are turning the glucose and oxygen into ATP. That's our energy and that's why we're doing it. But as a side effect, we're releasing carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. So there's that cycle. Photosynthesis takes it from the atmosphere, cell respiration returns it to the atmosphere. Now here's a diagram of the carbon cycle and it does have one more important part to that cycle and that's the part that says combustion. Any time that something is burned, whether you're burning a match or burning a pile of leaves or burning a rainforest or burning a house, doesn't matter, and, or burning fossil fuels, I'm sorry, that was an important one. Anytime something is combusting, it's releasing carbon dioxide into the air. So when we burn a rainforest, we're releasing carbon dioxide into the air. When we drive our cars and we're burning a fossil fuel to power that car, we're releasing carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. And remember we said that that's a problem because carbon dioxide is acting like a blanket and heating the planet, and that's the primary cause of global warming. So the way to get rid of carbon dioxide is to have as many plants as possible. But of course, we're cutting down our forests and we're cutting down our plants. The plants are the vacuums that would pull that carbon dioxide back out of the atmosphere and take that blanket away. Okay, we're going to take a moment to look at um, the impact of humans on that carbon cycle. In the last 150 years, carbon dioxide levels have increased 40%. 
in the last 40 years, carbon dioxide has gone up another 20%. The graph that you see is the levels of carbon dioxide um, going up from 1960 to past 2000. So now here's the question that you notice that um, there's a line of best fit, that solid blue line that's going through. But you notice that each year it goes up and down. It's a zigzag line. And the question is, why are the carbon dioxide levels fluctuating each year? Why are they going up? and then coming down. I'll give you a hint. Um, the carbon dioxide levels are going down in the, in the summertime, in the springtime, and they're going up in the winter. Ah, the large amount of vegetation in the northern hemisphere consumes carbon dioxide each spring. So when the leaves come out, um, they're pulling the carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. But then when the leaves fall in the fall, huh, uh, it's, there's nothing to take the carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere, and so CO2 levels increase. Okay, now here's where the global warming business comes in. All plants and animals, dead or alive, contain carbon, and that's because either we're, the plants are photosynthesizing, so they're taking in carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and they're turning it into glucose, so they're full of carbon, or the animals are eating those plants, so they're taking that glucose and incorporating it into their bodies, and so they're full of carbon. Doesn't matter. Fossil fuels, for example, coal, oil, and natural gas, are made from the remains of ancient organisms. So fossil fuels are packed full of carbon. So when we burn fossil fuels, aka combustion, we're returning the carbon back into the atmosphere as carbon dioxide. That's a global warming gas. So I want to make sure that you get this irony, um, how bad it is when we burn um, our rainforests. When vegetation is burned because it's combustion, carbon dioxide is being added to the atmosphere. And this is the double whammy. Plants that could have removed that carbon dioxide from the atmosphere are being destroyed. So not only is carbon dioxide more carbon dioxide being added, but the very things that would vacuum it out of the atmosphere for us are being destroyed. Just to get a sort of worldwide um, perspective on um, the burning of vegetation and the impact we're having on our planet, we just don't see it in Minnesota. And so we need to look at a more global level before we see what's really happening. Um, this is a photograph of South America taken from the space shuttle during what's called the non-burning season when um, farmers are not moving into the rainforest and trying to create new farmland. Normal water vapor clouds are, are present. You see the puffy little clouds, a few larger clouds or storms are in the area. This photo, however, is a photo of the same exact area of South America from the space shuttle during the burn season. Thick yellow smoke covers much of the continent. Unfortunately, about 30 million acres of tropical rainforest just in Brazil are burning each year. Um, and so we don't see that in Minnesota and we tend to be oblivious to what's happening in the rest of the world. And it's important to have that perspective. Okay, the final cycle that we're gonna talk about in this screencast is called the nitrogen cycle. And unfortunately, this is by far the hardest of the cycles. Um, some information just to tie in nitrogen for you. 78% of the atmosphere is nitrogen. Remember, we breathe in oxygen, but oxygen only makes about 20% of our atmosphere. 78% of the atmosphere is nitrogen. Plants and animals can't use this form of nitrogen, but we need the nitrogen for things like amino acids and DNA. And so we have to get that nitrogen. So it turns out there are these teeny tiny little bacteria called nitrogen fixing bacteria. When you fix something, when an organism fixes something, it means it removes it from the atmosphere and incorporates it into its body. So nitrogen fixing bacteria in the soil and in some plant roots convert nitrogen in the atmosphere to nitrate, which plants can use. Nitrogen fixing bacteria tend to be found in the roots of plants called legumes. Um, that includes nuts and um, trying to think what else, soybeans, beans, um, those are legumes and they have nitrogen fixing bacteria in them. When plants and animals decompose, they have nitrogen in them, they, in the form of amino acids and DNA. So that nitrogen is then retor returned to the soil. So remember the, the nitrogen is being removed from the atmosphere by nitrogen fixing bacteria, and then it's being returned to the soil when plants and animals die. So to make this a cycle, there's another bacteria called anaerobic bacteria, which take nitrogen from the soil and return it back to the atmosphere to complete the cycle. 
Okay, this is the last slide and it's full of pretty difficult words. I think there's two words that I really would like you to know. Um, the first one is on the far left, denitrification. Those are the bacteria that are returning nitrogen back into the atmosphere. So they're putting nitrogen into the atmosphere and making our atmosphere 78% nitrogen. The other word that I would like you to know is on the opposite end, on the right side, the nitrogen fixating or nitrogen fixation. Um, the bacteria that are pulling nitrogen out of the atmosphere, putting it into the soil where plants can use it. The, the plants usually that have um, those nitrogen fixing bacteria in their nodules are called legumes. Um, so lots of times farmers will rotate crops. So for example, corn uses tons and tons of nitrogen. So corn pulls nitrogen out of the soil. And so farmers often have to fertilize with a lot of nitrogen in order to grow corn. But nowadays, farmers are trying to rotate their crops so that they can use fewer fertilizers. So one year they grow corn, and then the next year they might grow a legume like, like soybeans. Soybeans return nitrogen back to the atmosphere, or back to the soil um, so that the soil isn't quite so barren, and then they can grow corn the year after that. All right, that's it. Let me know if you have any questions.